BBT's alive! Let's go! That's so sick! What's up everybody? It's Greg Peters with the Car Passion Channel here and behind me I have my NB1 Miata that recently underwent an NB2 engine swap aka a VVT swap. So in today's video, I'll show you how to wire your VVT up to a standalone ECU in a chassis that was never VVT equipped. And I'll also take the car out for some street tuning to show you some of the tools and techniques that I use for that to tune the VVT map and see if we can get some big gains or at least get a map roughed out that's good enough before I have time to get it on the dyno again. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So before we can get into tuning VVT, I want to talk about what the heck it even is. So VVT stands for Variable Valve Timing, and it came standard on all 1.8 liter Miatas from 2001 to 2005. Now the cylinder head is also a direct fit for 1994 through 2000 engines for those considering a VVT head swap. Although, if you go with the full VVT engine, you do get the advantage of the highest compression pistons available amongst all NA and NB engines, which is 10 to 1 in the US or 10.5 to 1 in Japan, and I think Europe too. VVT changes cam timing, aka at what point in the engine cycle the valves are opening and closing. Now on the Miata, it's just on the intake cam only, but arguably that's the more important cam to have it on anyways because it has the greatest effect on performance. Here's a side-by-side -side clip of what VVT Advance actually looks like when the engine is turning over, just so you have a general idea of what I'll be talking about for this entire video. So you can see the piston coming up here, approaching top dead center. That's about the very top, and the intake valve cracks open and starts the lifting sequence. Now, take a look at the difference between that and full VVT Advance. Piston's on its way up, bam, the intake valve is already cracking. Look how far the intake valve was open when the piston got the top dead center. They're literally flying towards each other during that valve opening event. And that's why these clearances have to be measured out, factoring in the VVT Advance, because everything might clear at zero degrees, but as soon as your ECU kicks on VVT to some degree, you could get piston to valve contact contact at a high rate of speed if your engine's running, and that is an expensive repair. Now the reason you'd want to control such a thing is the mass and velocity of air coming through the intake ports varies greatly based on engine speed and load. And while cycling the valves earlier, aka having more VVT advance, might be better for low to mid RPM operation, in the high RPM it actually makes the engine less efficient and therefore less powerful. Well, VVT lets you have the best of both worlds. And not only is it adjustable up to 44 degrees, it's also infinitely adjustable in between those two points. So you know adjustable cam gears that people put on their engines? VVT accomplishes the same thing, except it's infinitely adjustable on the fly and electronically controlled by the ECU. It's essentially the same thing as BMW's Vanos system, but it's more superior to Nissan's VTC, which does change the cam advance, but it's only got two points of adjustment, so it's basically an on-off switch, kind of like VTEC. But VVT is not really as good as VTEC because although VTEC is also an on-off system with only two points of adjustment, it changes the cam timing and the valve lift, so it can make a lot more power. But the king of everyone is BMW's Valvetronic, which has infinitely variable valve lift. In fact, it has so much adjustment, those cars don't even need a throttle body because the airflow is controlled by how much the intake valves open. How sick is that? Okay, I guess I should say the king of everyone is really Koenigsegg's free valve, which has infinitely adjustable, very everything, which someone has actually put on a Miata before, so you should search that up if you haven't seen it. But anyways, I'm off on another crazy tangent. What do you say we jump into the Miata and do some actual VVT tuning? So first we need to get our ECU communicating with the VVT solenoid. Most standalones should be able to do this. I'm using a Motorsport Electronics ME442 here. There's only one wire that needs to run to a pin in the ECU. You'll have to refer to your manual to figure out which pin that is. On the ME442, I'll be using the LS1 pin, clearly labeled that way because activating VVT will unlock more torque than an LS1 swap. <clears throat> 
Anyways, uh, over on the solenoid side, it does not matter which pin that wire goes to because it's not polarized. So pick a pin, any pin, and then the other pin simply needs a switched 12 volt power source, which you can get from your injector harness, or in my case, I use the power from the EGR solenoid. Once you have your power and signal lines run, before you can plug it in, you'll need to make what's called a flyback circuit using a diode, which is an electrical component that only lets electricity flow in one direction. To do this, I simply followed the directions on the Motorsport electronic site, which I'll link down below. Once that's done, I wrapped everything up with electrical tape so the wires couldn't pull on each other and then slid over some protective electrical sleeving on the harness, and that's it. VVT is now wired up and the hard part is done. Next up, you'll need to jump into the tuning software to activate VVT. If you're using the ME software, simply hop over to the IO setup tab, find the pin that you used for the VVT signal, which in my case is LS1, and change it to, you guessed it, VVT. Then hop over to the VVT tab and enable it. If you're using a base map, even if it's for another year of Miata, the settings should be programmed in already, but here's what the base settings look like just in case. Now to give it a test, make sure the VVT table has some advance on it, aka it's not populated with just all zeros, and rev up the engine. Keep in mind that if your engine is warmed up, there probably won't be enough oil pressure to achieve any VVT angle until somewhere between 2500 and 3000 RPM. Also a huge warning here, if your engine has any kind of internal modifications, like different pistons, cams, or a shaved head, it might not be able to safely utilize full VVT advance. This is one of those things where if you click a wrong button on the laptop, you will legitimately ruin your engine in one second. With a stock engine, you have plenty of piston to valve clearance to run full advance if you see fit. If you're in the process of building an engine with aftermarket parts and you wanna know how much VVT advance it can handle, check out this video right here, which I'll link down below. The only other setting you might need to mess with is minimum and maximum VVT duty cycle, but for my tuning session, the base settings work just fine. Now that the wiring and the settings are configured, it's time to take to the streets and find some of those gains, boys. Now, of course, you can just Google up some tuned VVT tables and get a pretty good map copied and pasted in, but to me, that just kind of takes the fun out of it. So the first thing I whipped out is my trusty Draggy. It's the pinpoint accurate performance metering device that lets you post your Miata's blazing 11 second zero to 60 times online to brag to all your friends about. No, seriously, I actually run an online leaderboard showcasing the performance of all different levels of Miatas based on time slips and Draggy data. You should check it out. And if you want to join in on the fun, you can follow the link in the description and use my coupon code CARPASSION10 to save yourself a few bucks. Anyways, moving on, you'll also need a laptop and that's to make tuning changes as well as take data logs from your ECU and you'll also need a free program called Virtual Dyno. I also like to bring along a notepad to keep track of the adjustments that I've made on each run. My poles will all be on a flat road and I'll use some custom parameters in the Draggy software to record the time it takes to get from 20 to 60 miles per hour in third gear, which translates roughly to about 2700 to 7000 RPM. And I'm sure you're wondering why I'm using both Draggy and Virtual Dyno, and it's because each measurement tool has its own strength and weakness. Virtual Dyno is much better at detecting small changes in power, assuming that it's being used correctly, of course, but it's extremely sensitive to wheel spin over small bumps, since it relies solely on analyzing RPM change over time. Draggy, on the other hand, isn't that great for overlaying and comparing small changes in power, but it's incredibly accurate for measuring the actual acceleration of the car because it can't be cheated or manipulated by, say, driving down a steep hill because it also records the average slope of each run. This will all make much more sense when I collect the data and compare it on screen. Now it's time to do a bunch of pulls and record some data. Don't worry, I won't make you sit through 20 pulls that all look exactly the same, but the gist is I did two pulls on each tune setting and collected a data log for Virtual Dyno along with a Draggy run for each of those settings. Since Draggy and the data logs both have timestamps, it's easy to match them up later, which I know that sounds kind of easy, but when you do 20 or 30 runs and you forgot to log two of them or write them down, they can easily get confusing as far as what's what. So the first pull here was with zero VVT advance on the table. Then I did repeated pulls at 4, 14, 24, 34, and 44 degrees and overlaid all the runs inside Virtual Dyno. 
Now this isn't going to be quite as precise as a real dyno, but it should be significantly better than either leaving VVT turned off or just throwing random values into the table. Now on this run right here, which was at 4 degrees of advance, it looks like the engine had a massive spike of torque, but in reality that just came from a tiny wheel hop. That's because Virtual Dyno looks at engine acceleration and assumes the wheels had full contact with the ground during the pull and then translates that into vehicle acceleration. Meanwhile, the Draggy shows no additional acceleration in the beginning of the run because it's measuring how fast the car itself is accelerating, not how fast the RPM is climbing. Anyways, back on Virtual Dyno, in the bottom section here, even though it says boost PSI, I set it up to read VVT advance, so it shows the actual cam advance on each run. I'll take that bad graph out so it looks less cluttered. It's really not that important. If you're doing this at home, you probably want to do at least four runs at each angle. The more data you collect, the more accurate your tune will be. Now we'll just take a look at the general trends of torque versus VVT angle, and the most noticeable of which is the divergence where the 34 degree curve really takes off from the zero degree curve, and it peaks out at about 4,000 RPM. And then up here, the 14 degree curve is really shining up at 5,800, but it loses steam compared to the zero degree curve up near redline. I'll just populate my table roughly based on this information information and go do some more pulls. Also keep in mind that I'm only doing full throttle tuning today and while the engine does benefit from VVT advance in the lower load cells, it's just not the focus of this video. A fully tuned VVT table will probably look something like this. Now these two graphs show the tuned versus untuned VVT, and as you can see, the top end power is about the same, but there's quite a difference in mid-range power, the biggest gain being around 3850 RPM. Now although the actual figures themselves might not be perfectly accurate, in fact they're probably a little bit low, since the method and tools used for collecting the data was the same, the difference between the two numbers should be pretty trustworthy. And that is looking very nice, with a gain in torque of about 17% at 3850. Pretty cool on paper, but how does that translate into real world acceleration? We'll let the Draghi test that out. The first pull of the day with untuned VVT showed a 20 to 60 time of 7.90 seconds and took 458 feet to accomplish. With the full tune slapped on the Miata, that dropped down nearly one second to 6.96 and only took 404 feet or 54 feet less than the untuned pull. Now let's check that acceleration out on the gauges side by side to see if we can visually see a difference. comparison, I want to show the difference in high RPM acceleration running full advance versus no advance just to illustrate how much VVT can really change engine efficiency. So I know the data is great and everything and it provides validation for what's going on, but let me tell you, I'm on the drive home right now from tuning. mid-range is something else like okay I promise you I'm not exaggerating I know it's just a Miata bro like how much power could it have but as you saw from virtual dyno and from the draggy data the gains are there and they're measurable but sometimes it's when you're driving your car after getting it tuned or tuning it and you get behind someone slow like a guy on a bicycle or something and you're like ah I'm freaking gonna pass this guy and you downshift and you go oh dang the car is more powerful. That's when you really notice is when you're not trying to notice. Because when you're trying to feel how much more power the car has, it's basically just like placebo effect, unless you like went from NA to boosted or something like that. But 10, 15 foot pounds of torque, if you're trying to feel it, you're gonna be like, yeah, it's definitely faster, bro, I think. But when you're not expecting it, that's freaking, that's when you get the kick and you're like, whoa, that's sick. <laughs> Confirm, VVT brings this bad boy to life. And after a long, hot day of street tuning, you know it's burrito time, boys.
And that's it for Car Passion's VVT Street Tuning Extravaganza. As you can see, we got some actual tunable and measurable gains with some fun and easy to use tools. Don't forget to check out my link below in the description to Draggy if you wanna pick one up yourself. The Miata is running stronger than ever, although I am still excited to get it on the dyno so I can fine tune that table and see if I can find a couple more horsepower here or there. Hope you guys learned something in this video. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.